toate despre ce este lucru? What does it mean to the Indian? What is it? Uh, Mr. Parashi, would you say a few words? Uh, mention that in his reading, he said that the uh, Indians and the Squawkies were once the wards of the government. <coughs> Back in 1924, when President Coolidge was uh, was the president of the United States, he automatically made all the Indians in the United States citizens and a right to vote. <coughs> and that was all that we received at that time, our citizenship and a right to vote. All the others that the government had over us Uh, remain the same. So today we are still the wards of the government. And in regards to schools, I wish to say a little in that regard. <coughs> Yesterday I spent a little time in looking through some treaties, and what little time I had, I looked in a few, and I found in three of the treaties where the word education was mentioned. And that was one of the promises that the government made to the Meskwakis. And that was to educate the Indians in order to better themselves. <clears throat> and I found in 1830 treaty on the fifth article of uh, education mentioned. And another one in 1836 on the fifth article mentioned and one in 1837 in the eighth article there's an, an education mentioned there for the Meskwakis. Now those were the promises the government made to the Meskwakis and in all these treaties that the government made with the, with the Meskwakis there's always the word perpetual connected with it and the word binding and you know what those words mean. And that word perpetual, when they made the promises to the Indians, they always say that those promises would be good as long as the streams flow and as long as the grass grew. And that word binding, it seems like uh, the binding must have ripped And the Indians themselves have never broken any of these treaties, and it's always the ones that write out the treaties that break those rules. And just about all the promises have been broken in those treaties. So since the government promised to educate the Indians, I think that they should continue operating those government schools. Now, I want to hear from uh, uh, Peter Morgan. Uh, of course, uh, I want to, he's one of the elderly men, one of the, our older men. And I want John Morgan to, uh, to interpret for uh, Mr. Morgan, if you please. Both Mr. Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. من ماذا أصل بها؟ شنو نحكي معك؟ كي شنو معك هنا كي يا منامها وهنا أقبل المعاد قلت وقت السجاء أنا أبني سواشي كان من الدونة هي دمعة جمال الدونة بدي جمال أخوة إني أتفش تايز أيوة ناحية نوزي أقول إني نحكي أصدان الدين Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I've been asked to uh, appear before this group uh, tonight to uh, serve as an interpreter for Mr. Morgan here one of our elderly gentlemen of the tribe, and uh, I'd like to say this on behalf of Mr. Morgan, that he says uh, that uh, years ago the uh, 
government, the uh, leading men in the history of our country, uh, made agreements with the Indians, even to the extent of firing salutes, and praying to the Great Spirit for various uh, help and guidance. They made uh, a lot of promises which were never kept. This is through the doings of Congress in various phases of our government throughout the uh, two or three hundred years since the uh, first organization of our government. And uh, we find, once again, I say that most of the promises made uh, by those gentlemen have never been kept. And uh, we'd like to uh, see our uh, men act and uh, the general public also to uh, give us a little help in these matters so that they might be solved to the satisfaction of everyone concerned with these problems. Thank you. That was uh, fine and that uh, gives a uh, thought in a uh, wrong point uh, that require serious thinking and understanding. Now, I want uh, to show that uh, uh, Mr. Davenport here and Mr. Morgan over there are elderly men of the tribe. Now, we have the middle-aged group here, uh, and then we've got some uh, teenage uh, uh, girls, and uh, I think there's one boy, teenage, that uh, they wanted to express themselves on the, the question of recreation. I want the expression from these uh, youngsters. Uh, I think I'll call on uh, my daughter, Ivory, first, and then uh, the rest of you take turns. Certainly, Father said, um, I think what the young people, the Indian young people of our reservation need is a recreation center. We don't have any place to gather or have our parties or to have fun. We always have to go hang around downtown or do, do a lot of things that... And uh, I think this uh, problem here we have is very important to us, especially the youth. This, uh, problem of having a recreation center. Mr. Chairman, so we can have a recreation center, I think we, we should have uh, the equipment and a place for, to have the recreation. <clears throat> if we had uh, recreation, we, we should have a supervisor keep the recreation going. Someone who would, who would be interested in understand the teenagers. 